Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning the classic 60s hit, My Girl. So with this arrangement, we're practically learning the entire tune up until the ending. So on the original performance, the song modulates to a different key. So originally the song starts out in C major, but by the end of the tune, they do a key change and they go up a whole step to D major. So if you're a little familiar with music theory, then you probably noticed that I did modulate at the end of my performance up to D, but instead of playing another verse, another pre-chorus, another chorus, I vamped and ended on that riff. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can play the ending all those parts using a capo in the part two lesson. So if you do wanna play that last bit of the tune, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that using a capo in the part two lesson, but let's talk about this lesson, which is the part one. So in the part one lesson, we're gonna learn the first half of this tune. And if you guys would like to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, you can do so by clicking this link or going to rockclass101.com and doing a search for My Girl. Now on that page, in addition to the tabs, will also be the on-screen tab viewer. This is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tabs scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a really great asset in learning this song that much quicker. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning this tune. So there's a few things that uh, we need to kind of get under our belt that's gonna help us as we go through this lesson. The first thing is that I'm gonna be counting out the rhythms as we go through each uh, section bar by bar. So if you're new to understanding rhythmic notation and counting out along while you play, check out this lesson. And secondly, one of the techniques that we do throughout this entire tune is a percussive hit. So we're actually gonna be playing a melody note simultaneously while we tap a backbeat. Really cool stuff. So you can hear it at that last part where I play the open first string and tap as well. So if you are new to this technique, I actually have a super in-depth lesson that teaches you the mechanics behind it. So check out this lesson. And I'll put both of those in the description box below too. So if you want to reference it at some point later on in this lesson, they'll be down there as well. Uh, next up, there is another technique that is a fan strum which is also known as rasgiato. It's a really cool technique that gives us a bigger, louder sound where it's kind of like using uh, four fingers in a flick approach. So if you're new to this technique, we had a lesson about a couple months ago that was a flamenco tune called La Gitanita, which is spelled G-I-T-A-N-I-T-A. -I -I so that lesson is gonna go super in depth into using the four finger strum roll. So if, again, if you're new to that technique, then I'll put that lesson, that link to the lesson in the description box below. All right, so let's kick off with the intro. One thing I do want to mention is that I'm playing this intro using an octave of the C note. Now on the original recording they do a fifth so instead of an octave they're going to use the G note which is the third fret of the second string you're gonna play between that note and the open C so if you want to be true to the record then you're gonna to want to play the third fret of string two and then the C string open twice. But I've always liked the, the octave of a C, so I guess I kind of rewrote it for my taste. Anyways, I just want to throw that out there uh, because it is technically incorrect. All right, so let's take a listen to what the intro sounds like, and then we'll break it down. So it's only a couple bars plus one little pickup note. Sounds like this. Okay. So as you can see, we're pretty much playing out of a C major chord, just that stock basic C major chord. So go ahead and take that ring finger, put on the third fret of string one. So we're gonna play that note, and then we're gonna play the third string open twice. Okay, so we have a little pickup measure where we're starting on the end of four. So we have three and four, end. Okay, so the first bar, the first hit of the first bar is gonna be that C string twice. So you have one end. So you're gonna hit that twice. 
then you have a rest, an eighth note rest, and then you're literally gonna start that little pattern again, where you're going first string and then third string twice. So we have three and four and one and rest and three and rest and... Okay, and that covers our first bar. So let's see if we can try that together. So we have three and four and one and rest and three and rest and awesome so for bar two we're literally doing everything identical to bar one so it just continues bouncing between that third string and the first string so literally the same bar goes again so you have one and rest and three and rest and okay so if we put it together the pickup plus those first two bars, then this is what we get. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Awesome. So that pattern literally goes one, two, three, four, and then you have that last little hit. So you have one, two, three, four, Five. So you have that last little hit at the end, and that's going to kick us into the iconic riff. Okay, and one last thing to recap before we kick into the riff. Remember, if you do want to play like the record, then you're going to, you're going to want to play on the third fret of the second string. So they're doing a fifth on the record. I did an octave. So let's kick into the riff. So this riff is really, really interesting to me because it's a scale. It literally is a five note scale. It's a major pentatonic. It's a C major pentatonic, which is five notes out of the C major scale, the basic Ionian C major scale. It's one, two, three, five, six, one. So C, D, E, G, A, and then back to C. And that's literally all it is. And what's interesting to me is that they took a simple scale, a five note scale, and it became a hit by doing one thing, putting a rhythm to that scale. And that rhythm is this. It's a dotted quarter followed by eighth notes. It's one and two and three and four and all in one bar, and that's it. And it became iconic to this tune. So really, really cool. So with this, we're going to begin adding our tapped backbeat. And that's what's gonna give it a little bit more of a, kind of a, keep the momentum going throughout. You can hear the difference instead of, We have a little bit more of a groove carrying on throughout this. Now our tapped hits, they're gonna fall on beat two and beat four. So it keeps that backbeat going throughout the tune. That backbeat happens throughout everything except one little section in this song. So when we get to that, we'll point it out. But remember, we're hitting on two and four throughout the pretty much the remainder of the tune. So let's go ahead and learn this riff. So it's gonna start with the open C. And we're gonna hold that for a quarter. So we're gonna tap on beat two, okay? And follow that up by playing the second fret of the third string, okay? So actually, let's talk about the right hand real quick. You can use a four finger approach throughout this for your right hand finger picking. So each finger gets its own string, four, three, two, one. And that's a really good way to approach playing throughout all of this. Now, sometimes you can switch between this four finger approach to a three finger approach where the thumb would get string four and string three, index would get string two, middle would get string one. So it's okay if you flip flop or alternate between three finger approach versus four finger approach. And if you're new to using a three finger or a four finger approach, then definitely check out our finger picking concepts course. It goes super in depth and gives a bunch of exercises. It really shows you the difference of when you should use three finger versus when you should use a four finger approach. 
All right, so going back to this riff. So again, we started with the open C. That's a quarter note. And we're going to tap on beat two. And we're going to follow that up by playing the second fret of the third string. Okay, follow that up with the open E, then the open G, and then the open A plus a tap, and then the third fret of string one. So you're literally, if you think of the notes you're playing, you have open C, second fret, which is a D, open E, then the open G, and then open A, and then the third fret of the A string, which takes us back to C. So you have one, two, and three, and four, and... Okay, so let's see if we can try that real slow. So we have three, four, one, tap, two, oh, 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 three, oh, tap, two, oh, 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 three. Okay, so let's see if we can try it one more time. If I'm going too fast, I'll put little directions up here on how to slow down the YouTube player. So three and four and one. So really, really cool riff. So that's gonna go two times, but on the second time, we have a little variation at the end. So let's cover that. So on the second bar for this riff, you're going to go. So it kicks into the vocal line. So we start the same for the first half. We have open, tap, two, oh, oh. Okay, and when you get to this, this will be beat four. We're going to take our ring finger, put on the seventh fret of string one. You're going to strum all four strings and then play the fifth fret of string one. Okay, so if you put that together, we have one, two, and three, and strum five. So we're not tapping on beat four for this one, but we are tapping on beat two. So let's see if we can try that bar. Three, and four, and one, two, and three, and strum five. Nice. So let's see if we can try one and two together for this riff. Here we go. Three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and strum five. Nice. So that gives us our entire intro and riff. Let's see if we can backtrack and try all of those. So that gives us four bars into the tune. Here we go. Starting on the end of four. Three and four and one. So that leads us into our first verse. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first bar. So this is bar one out of eight for the verse. Okay, so really what's happening is that we're playing the riff pretty much identical to what we learned out of the first uh, position right here in C. But the first two notes are different. We have a strum on the seventh fret, so that same chord we strummed just a second ago, and then jumping to the third fret. So you have one and tap, two, oh, 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 three, and the rest of it is the same. So only the first two eighth notes, one and, that's different. And then you're back to tap, two, oh, oh, tap, three, all of that is identical to the riff. So let's see if we can try that bar together. Three and four and one and two and three and four and... Nice. So here's the second bar. Sounds like this and it's out of F. Okay, so this F chord, it's literally a D chord that we're moving up the neck, goes up a whole step becomes an E, goes up another half step becomes what we want, which is an F. So if this blew your mind, check out this lesson on the caged method. It's all about moving chords up the neck so we can learn how to break away from only playing in this first position. So with this chord, we're going to use the middle finger for the fifth fret of string three, 
the ring finger underneath it, fifth fret of string two, and the index on the third fret of string one. And we're gonna ignore string four. So for this one, we're gonna strum three down, then we're gonna tap on beat two. So the first hit is a quarter. We have one, two. And then we're going to do a quick hit. We have a 16th note hit right after this. Okay, so it's gonna be the third fret of string one, which you already have fretted with the index, and then use the pinky to play the fifth fret of string one. And then after that, you're gonna lift up and you're gonna play the third fret of string one again. So the rhythm here is a little tricky. We're tapping on two, which is gonna be an eighth note. Then we have two 16th notes, and uh, and then when you lift up and play the third fret again, that's gonna be a quarter note on beat three. So if we put all that together, you have one, two, and a three. So quarter, eighth, and a, those are 16th, and then quarter note for beat three. So you have strum, tap, three, five, three. Okay, so that's calling out the frets, right? Strum, tap, three, five, three. Okay, and then after that, you're going to lift all this up. You're gonna play the open A with a tap for beat four, and then the open G. Okay, so you have one tap and a three, four end. So this bar is one that's gonna be probably the trickiest so far that we've tackled. So this is just one that you wanna practice slowly and get the movement down nice and cleanly. Okay, so let's see if we can try it together. Three, four, one, tap, and a three, tap, O. Oh. Cool. Now let's see if we can backtrack. Let's try one to two together. Three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and a three, four, and. So let's take a look at the third bar. Now the third bar is actually identical to the riff. So you're back to playing. Okay, so that bar very simple because we already know it. So let's look at the fourth bar. Now our fourth bar is basically identical to this last bar, but instead we're playing out of the F chord. So it sounds like this. And that little uh, variation at the end. So let's tackle this one. So this bar is out of the stock F chord, but again, we're ignoring the fourth string. So we only need our first finger on that first fret of string two. So you're gonna play that, and then you're gonna follow it up with a tap on beat two, and then we're gonna play the third fret of the second string, followed up by the open A, and then the third fret of the A string. So you have one, two, and three, and we can actually use that pinky to catch that. It's kind of cool because you get a little bit more ringing out if you sustain this G note and then the C note on top of it. So you can hear that nice little sustain. One, two, and three, and... Okay, for beat four, you're gonna tap plus play the open A. And then we're gonna follow that up with a hammer on three to five on the first string. So quick, bottom. So I'm using one to third finger. So together it sounds like this. One, two, and three, and four, and a. So you can hear that rhythm for the last part is the same as what we had covered earlier where it's an eighth followed by a quick 16th note, four and a, right? So remember 16th notes are four e and a. But since the first one lasts for an eighth, it's four and a. So we have four and a. Okay. So again, one more time, we have first fret, then tap, third fret, open A, third fret of the first string, then tap the open. That buys you time to lift those fingers up, and then three to five, quick 16th hit at the end. So one, two, and three and four and a. Let's try that bar together. Three, four, one, two, and three and four and a. Nice. Now let's backtrack. Let's try three to four. Remember three is the same as that riff, just playing out a C. Three, four, one,
Okay, now let's backtrack and try one through four. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and a three, four and Nice. So now we're into the second half, so bar five. So bar five is really cool because it's identical to bar one. So you're back to playing. So that same starting on the seventh fret to the third, and then the rest of the riff. Okay, now after that, you were kicking back to the F chord, so that same D shape, but the F chord. And this time we have a bit of a variation. So not the same movement as before, but straight out of this chord right here. It sounds like this. Okay, so let's tackle that. Let's go ahead and make the F. You're gonna strum on beat one, tap on beat two, and then we're gonna play the third string, the fifth fret. Follow that up by adding your pinky to the fifth fret of string one. So that rhythm will be this. One, two, and three. So end three. So beat three will last a quarter. We have one, two, and three. Okay, so we're gonna hold that up, tap again on four just by itself. And then at the end of this, we're lifting the pinky up and we have a quick 16th note pull off. So we already know that rhythm is four and a. So put together, you have one, two, and three, four, and a. Okay, so strum, tap, three, one, tap, pull off. Okay, so again, strum, tap, five, five, tap, three, O. Oh. Okay, let's give that bar a shot. Three, four, one, two, and three, four, and a. Nice. So let's try bar five and six together. Three, four, one and two, and three and four and one, two and three, four and a. Okay, so now we're into the seventh bar. Seventh bar is the same as the first bar, so we're back to playing just that straight riff. And then for our eighth bar, we're going back to playing the same F riff, but we're cutting the last two notes out. So it sounds like this. So the same as the beginning, we have one, two, and three, and four. So remember when we tap and play the open A, after that we have that quick hammer on. For this one, we're not. We're just ending on the open A. So you have one, two, and three and four. So it makes it a lot easier. So let's try seven and eight together. Three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. Nice. Now let's backtrack five through eight and then one through eight. Three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and a one. Okay, now one through eight. Three, four, one and two, and three and four and one, two and a three, four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and one, two and three, four and a one. Awesome. So that covers the entire first verse. So now we're into the pre-chorus. So the cool thing about the pre-chorus is that, again, it's, it's literally, well, it's not again, it's literally the same little walk up that happens where you have, what could make me feel this way? Right before you get to the chorus, my girl, my girl, my girl. So the first time we're playing this little walk up, these first couple bars, they're going to be 
continuing with that finger picking in the taps, but the second time around, the third and the fourth bar for the walk up. We're gonna incorporate the rasqueado strum, which is that four finger strum, that little barrel strum. So it gives it a nice little contrast uh, because the first couple bars you play different than the second couple bars, you have a little variation. So kind of cool, really fun little part. So let's learn those first four chords that move up. It's just a, it's a double stops, two notes. So let's learn those four chords real quick and then we'll learn how to play out of them. So the first one is going to be a uh, variation on C. Basically, uh, we can make the full chord shape actually. We'll make all three fingers, or three strings, not three fingers. So this one, lay flat on the third fret, string one and two, add your middle to the fourth fret of string three. So we have C. For the next one, we're going to lay completely flat on the fifth fret, strings one, two, and three. Okay. The next one, we're back to the same shape as we did for C, but now we're on 988. So this is an F. Okay, so 9 flat with 8. And then move that up a whole step and you get G. Okay, so 11 flat on 10. So hit pause for a second, just cycle through those four shapes. You have C, D minor, the F, G. And this whole time we're ignoring string four. So once you get comfortable with that, let's learn the little picking pattern for the first two bars. So starting on C, we're gonna pluck three and two together, and that's gonna last a quarter. After that, we're going to tap plus play the first string, and then play the second string after that. So you have one, two, and, so let me, one more time. One, two, and. So you're gonna follow that same pattern up, but go to the D minor now. So you're gonna tap three and two, I'm sorry, pluck three and two, and then tap plus play string one, and then string two. So that's the pattern, right? That's pluck, tap two, pluck, tap two. So that's the pattern that just rolls up for this whole uh, first time through. So pluck, tap two, pluck, tap two. So let's see if we can try that together slowly. Three, four, one, two, and three. Nice. We're going to do the same thing. So go up to F and then we're going to G. So let's see if we can try that. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, and three, four, and. Awesome. Now let's see if we can try both of them. So both bars. Three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Sweet, so that's the first two bars for the pre-course. Now we're gonna do it again, but this time we've got the Rasgiato strum incorporated. So you're gonna start it the same. You're gonna start with the pluck of three and two. But after that, you're going to do the Rasgiato strum going, uh, hitting on beat two. So we're actually playing all quarter notes, so check it out. So one, two, three, four, one, two, Okay, and you can put a little vibrato on that chord as well for the first hit if you want, just to give it a little bit more character. And if you're new to doing vibrato on uke, I'll put a lesson in the description box below that teaches the mechanics behind it. So we're gonna pluck three, two, and then rasgiato strum. Don't forget that lesson for the strum technique is in La Hitanita, so the link is below. Okay, so we have one, two, D minor. Let's give that a shot, all quarters. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Nice, now going up to F to G. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's backtrack, let's try both bars. Three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice, and if we try all four bars, Three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Awesome. So that leads us into 
the chorus. So our chorus is four bars in length and it has a really cool walk up that happens for the first couple. Let me go ahead and just play the chorus one time through. You can follow along with the words because um, it follows the lyrics exactly. My girl, my girl, my girl, and keeps going up higher in the harmony. So it sounds like this. So cool stuff, right? My girl. okay so let's kick off starts on the basic C so this time around we're gonna use the index finger for this so we're gonna go strum and then open G follow that up by a tap on beat two so you have one and tap from here we're going to a higher voicing of a C chord so take the middle finger put on the eighth fret of string two index on seven on string one the other strings above will be open we can strum that, and then this time we're going to play string two, and followed by a tap on beat four. So you can hear the rhythm is very simple. One and tap, three and tap. Okay, so we have one and tap, three and tap. Okay, so this higher voicing of C, it's literally that G chord shape moved up the neck without the third string. So again, that caged method, that I linked earlier, I'll put it in the description box below, all about moving chords up the neck. Really, really useful info, information. So again, start on C, strum for tap, then going up, we can just slide up to seven and eight, strum to tap. So let's put that together. Three, four, one and tap, three and tap. Okay, after this, we're gonna go higher again to another voicing of C. So with this one, we're on 10 and 12, so we're gonna go strum, two, and then tap. So it follows the same theme. So let's see if we can go through all three of those. We're starting on the basic C. Three and four and one and two. Three and four, one and two. So after that tap on beat two here, you're gonna backtrack to the third fret of string two. We're gonna hammer on three and, and then take that index, drop it to the third fret of string one and tap as well. So you can see you're basically out of that same F chord shape right there, okay? But we don't need that middle finger. So this second bar is one and two, three and four. Okay, so again, Strum to tap, three, five, tap, plus the third fret of string one. Okay, so you can try that second half. Okay, let's try that together. One, two, three, and four. Now let's put the first half to it. Three, four, one, and two, three, and four. Okay, one more time. Three, four. One and two, three and four. Okay, backtrack, let's try bar one and two. Three, four, one and tap. Three and tap, one and tap. Three and four. Nice. Now this third bar, we're playing out of D minor, but we have that same shape of that F chord that happens here. So here's the third bar. So a lot of percussive rhythm hits in it. So let's break it down. It's gonna start with a slap on beat one. And then from here, we're gonna play that D minor that we played earlier, but this time lay flat with the ring finger on the fifth fret, again, ignoring string four. So we can pluck all three strings, follow it up again with a slap, and then switch to that F shape and pluck those three strings again, okay? So this slap is just a basic chuck technique. So if you're new to chucking, then I'll put a link towards how I do it in the uh, description box below. And how I do it really lines you up perfectly to come down with this claw shape and then to come up with the plucking. It's gonna make it so much easier if you get the mechanics of that down. So you can see I come down with slap, come up with pluck, come down with slap, 
come up with pluck. One and two and three. Okay? So this F chord, it's gonna last into beat three. So you have one and two and three. So on the end of three, you're gonna play string one again, which is that third fret, and then tap on beat four. So the thumb tap. One and two and three and tap. Okay? So let's see if we can try that slow. Three, four, one and two and three and tap. Okay? Now the fourth bar sounds like this. If I count out the rhythm, I have one and tap, three and four. Okay, so let's break this one down. So the first chord we're playing is out of a G. So we have a variation on the G chord. Lay your index flat on the seventh fret, strings one, two, and three. Add your pinky to 10 on string one. So we have open, seven, seven, 10. So that's our G chord that's higher up. After that, lift your pinky up and put your middle finger on the eighth fret of string one. And you get that D7 shape, right? That D7 that we all know and love, we've played a lot. Uh, going up again with that cage method in mind becomes a G7, okay? So open seven, seven, eight. So you're starting out with the pinky down on 10 and then playing the eighth fret after. So you have one and follow that up with a tap on beat two. Then for beat three, we're gonna start with two Gs. We have three and, and then beat four, open A. Three and four. So that bar together you have strum A, tap, three and four, right? Four, four, one, calling out string names. So let's try that bar together, not too hard. Three, four, one and two, three and four. So all of these chords that we're doing, these partial bar chords, really vital that you have proper form with this U-shaped gap, proper placement of the thumb behind the neck. And that's really gonna set you up to get every note to ring crystal clear. So if you're new to understanding proper left-hand form, I'll put a link towards a lesson that covers all of that in, in super detail below as well. But let's see if we can backtrack right now and try bar three and four and then one through four for the chorus. Three. Four, one and two and three and tap. One and two, three and four. Nice. Now one through four. Three, four, one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. One and two and three and tap. One and two, three and four. So that's gonna cover everything for the first half of this tune. So if you guys wanna learn the second half of the song, we're gonna be covering that in the part two lesson at rockclass101.com. So you can click this link or just go to the site and do a search for My Girl. So the second half will cover the second verse and it's also going to cover the breakdown that happens before the solo, and the solo is really cool, really fun. And then we're gonna cover that key change that modulates up a whole step to D, and we vamp on the, the uh, riff to end the tune. But again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm gonna teach you guys how, if you wanna play the ending that's heard on the original recording, which is another verse, another pre-chorus, another chorus, that is in the key of D, so modulated up a whole step. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that using a capo. So all of that will be taught in the part two lesson. Don't forget that if you wanna get the tabs, that's gonna be available as well, as well as the on-screen tab viewer. So that really cool interactive tab player where you can hit play, watch the tabs scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars, loop sections, all that fun stuff it makes learning much easier. So all that will be over at the My Girl page on rockclass101.com. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the part two one. Take care. Let's go ahead and just play all the way up to there. <laughs> 